question you're going to ask while watching this is, what does any of this have to do with Egypt? And the answer to that is absolutely nothing. Even the visual design doesn't look very Egyptian. This seems to be one of those cases where they just picked a name that sounded interesting. The they in this case is Human Entertainment, and this is the only Famicom game that they published. But it's very far from the only Famicom game that they developed. Human has been around for years as a contract developer. Most notably, they did all of the Family Trainer games for Bandai. But by this point, they were finding great success on other platforms publishing the Fire Pro Wrestling series. It seems like they decided to focus their publishing efforts over there for the time being, and so missed the Famicom era almost entirely. This isn't the last Famicom game they'll develop, though. Besides the wrestling games that they'll be best known for, Human was also developing racing games, and other publishers will release a few more of those that they develop for the Famicom. I should point out that at 3,800 yen, this is the cheapest Famicom game we've seen in a long time. In fact, nobody's been priced at 3,800 yen since the early months of 1984. Egypt is a puzzle game, and like most puzzle games of this era, it has some very simple rules. You control a crystal ball, and your goal on every level is to erase all of the symbols. Symbols are erased when they're adjacent to each other, and the only way to move things is to put the ball onto one of the panels with an arrow. That causes the entire row or column to shift over in that direction, leaving the ball in the same place. The ball can't pass through the solid brick tiles, but it can go through any other one. So you will need to walk on the tiles that you're eliminating. On the right hand side you have a counter of how many tiles of each type remain, and that's useful because typically the only difficult part of a puzzle is dealing with an odd number of tiles. If there's an even number, they'll always pair off, and that's trivial to deal with. You can bounce around the stage sliding blocks forever, assuming you don't trap yourself in some immovable bricks. So with even numbers, it's just a matter of time. Odd numbers mean that you have to create a gap between two of the same type of tile, and then slide the matching tile between them. Geometrically, that's the only thing that works. There are 112 stages in Egypt, and if you're playing in story mode, these are arranged in groups of six. In free mode, you can just choose to do any puzzle you like. The plot of story mode is that you're an Indiana Jones-style archaeologist who finds this giant crystal ball and decides to revive a goddess for some reason. There are three difficulty levels for story mode, but they all play the exact same puzzles. I played on normal, which required that you complete all six of the puzzles on a tier before moving on, and I could find power-ups from time to time though I only found one of them ever during my playthrough. If you play on easy, then you only have to clear three of the puzzles before you can move down to the next tier, and you're given three power-ups that you can use. On hard mode, you have to clear everything, and you're never given power-ups. To activate the power-ups, you hit B to go down to the menu, then select one and hit A. The lightning bolt destroys all blocks around you, while the flash destroys all solid blocks in the puzzle. And the feather allows you to move the crystal ball over solid blocks up to five steps. If you ever find yourself stuck in Egypt, hit select and you'll be able to restart the puzzle. Pressing select while you're in between levels is how you get the password. Egypt also has an edit mode where you can create your own puzzles. The game can store up to four of them, but there isn't a battery backup here. Any puzzles you create will be lost when you turn the power off. This is one of those games that nobody remembers. Super obscure, and even the people who are aware of it don't seem to be very enthusiastic. Apparently, Egypt started out as a student project that Human turned into a full game, and you kind of feel it. It has a very basic rule set, and while that isn't necessarily a bad thing in a puzzle game, in the case of Egypt, it heavily restricts what you can do with the game. I played to level 36, which was about a third of the way through, and the puzzles were generally fairly shallow. There were two things you had to watch out for as you solved them. Dealing with an odd number of tiles, and trapping the ball among the blocks. Neither is especially difficult to deal with. And the game desperately needed a backup button. Although it was pretty rare for one misstep to ruin a puzzle, 
going one step too far means that you have to waste a lot of time getting back to the position you want. It doesn't make the game harder, it just makes it more annoying to play. Egypt just isn't a very good puzzle game. There's basically one idea at play here, and it isn't a very good idea. This one is better off forgotten.